if it needed to, it could mount it as network attached storage. It could, it shouldn't. I don't think that's great, but if you needed to, you could. Happy 2024. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna try to get back to recording. 2023 was a little bit rough. Um, at some point in December, I looked at my GitHub profile and I was like, whoa, I didn't do anything. So that's not good. I did get my work-life balance a little bit more together, started climbing more. I'm still pretty strong, even though I'm heavier than I've ever been. Um, you can see, I don't know, my skin. Oh, it's not zooming in on my hand. Never mind. My skin's pretty nasty uh, from climbing. But um, I do need to code a bit more. Um, and I do want to as well make some of the videos for an outlet for my creativity. So we're gonna try that in 2024. To make it possible though, I have to change how I'm gonna do it. So they're gonna be a bit more vloggy, a bit um, not edited as well, and not really planned. So how am I gonna do that? And I was like, you know what? I think I just need to show you what I'm working on um, and explain the concepts that are relevant to that particular project, piece of code, whatever, at that point in time, even if it doesn't flow together in some sort of module, etc., which would be my preference. So that is the goal. And this is the first take. I don't think I'm gonna edit this. Um, I am kind of committed to it. I spent a lot of money over Christmas, got a new, MacBook Pro uh, in part so that I have ports. I had the original M1, which had only two ports for power. And so now I can actually do things and show somewhere there's another UB key, um, some of the stuff that I'm doing. So for example, if I have something with UB keys, how do I get this to focus? It keeps focusing on me. Can I do this? There we go. How, it, how to get it to focus on, uh, sorry. So I can actually record now that I have more ports, uh, videos about like UB keys and other sort of security S things. So, okay, now it's focused on me again. Very good. Um, yesterday I spent a few hours actually documenting how to set up two different keys. So I have a personal key, which is on my keychain, and I needed one for work so that anything I put on GitHub Enterprise for internal Microsoft uh, also showed up as verified as opposed to unverified, which looks not professional. Okay, so that's the intro that I'm not gonna cut very much. Okay, so as an engineer in the customer experience group within Azure Engineering, the easiest thing for me to build is demos for use with customers. Um, have it done in a while. So this is something I'm working on. I wanted something that is kind of realistic and not just like a web shop or some random like calculator, but something kind of, hey, if you wanna do it in the cloud native way that leverages the advantages of having cloud architectures, this is how you would do it. So this is the front end, which is Nux.js. It has front end and back end components for security reasons, which I'll show in a bit. Um, right now, the piece that I was doing is actually done um, entirely uh, hard coded. I'm not doing any of the drag and drop, which I have here, the front end functionality. So that actually changed really quickly. So let me hit reload. You'll see it says uploading dot, dot, dot. When it's done, it will actually show a URL. Now, if I open this URL, you can see that in my Azure storage account, I have this image. Now, one of the things I wanted to build into it as a security feature is that if I were to open this URL now, like without the shared access signature token on it, you can't view it. It is, um, the storage account is configured such that although uh, on a network layer, it is publicly accessible, the contents are not publicly accessible without credentials. So that is the kind of first functionality I have. And the other important piece, if I open up the console, you'll see here is that it is uploaded in chunks. So this particular image is about four megabytes and I'm uploading them in about one megabyte chunks. So let's walk through the code of what this looks like. Okay, let's look at the application. Ignore that for now. Uh, one of the first things that you need to do in the application is I have this um, configuration that you can use. This is the example without the values that are populated. Um, these are environment variables, including a um, access key uh, that are given to the back end, not to the front end, which would be a security issue. Uh, so let's see, let's exit that. Let's go into the front end. Let's um, open it up in VS Code. 
So this part is just hard coded for me testing it. What I'm gonna do, and let me make this bigger and close that. The first thing is I'm gonna split it into blocks and I have a function that does that, it's not important. Um, then I'm going to get a uh, shared access signature token for the upload. So that comes from this API and it has two functionalities. So it has the read only token, which you saw earlier when I was viewing it in the browser and I set it to expire in three minutes. Um, the upload token, I give it 15 minutes and I give it read and write permissions. Uh, what's important is that it's scoped pretty granularly. It's not to the entire storage account. It's not to the container. It's to a specific file name. And so because I could not get this crazy <laughs> SAS uh, API interface, horrible thing working, I ended up using the um, SDK, even though I hate it, but it works. So coming back into here, I'm going to upload uh, my chunks. And then after it's done, I'm going to commit them. So when you're uploading everything in pieces, the storage account needs to know, hey, I'm done. Uh, please take all those little pieces and put it back together as an image. And that's what that last step does. So I don't think I wanna go into these pieces. Um, what I wanna do today more is actually explain the architecture bit and how this is different from um, non-cloud architectures. So let me figure out how to start recording on my iPad because that Windows Surface Book thingy doesn't work because um, I haven't turned it on in months. So it's not like uh, company managed, all these errors, whatever. So let me try to, to set up this iPad and I will be right back. Okay, so let's look first at how um, you would naively build this. Let's say on your local computer, it's not in the cloud, right? You would have a user who is in a browser. And what they would do is just upload. Let's just say this is HTTP and it's on your server. And somewhere on your server you have, that's a really bad image icon. So that is where you have your image, right? It could be a doc, it could be a PDF, whatever, but it's a one HTTP call. It's like, here's my file. That's fine if it's small, it's not great if it's large, which is what I demoed, but also it's not great uh, if you're in the cloud. Now, the reason is that the server, right? If you have multiple instances in the cloud like this, right? So let's just say this is one, it doesn't have to be that big, but whatever, two. And I don't know why I'm drawing a circle, three. So if your image, is on here, right? And your user then hits instance number one, where is that image? It can't load it. So what a lot of folks do, I see customers doing this all the time, they're gonna hit some server instances and these are all looking at a network attached storage. Now, the reason why this isn't so great is that you will have a bottleneck here in the network attached storage, which has its own sort of, let's say, performance um, caps, right? Based on the number of cores, memory, whatever plan you pick. Um, and then as well, especially if you're using a shared um, compute resources, you will also be uh, limited in terms of the network connections that you have going out from those instances. So what I'm doing in my setup that is a bit more um, cloud native is we're taking advantage of APIs. So what I have here is the blob storage API, and I'm gonna draw it like an API. So these are the interfaces that you can interact with. I probably need more space. Come on, why is this not working? There we go. Let's move this down here. So what I have here is my server. And let's bring back my user. So the first thing they're gonna do is they need a token, right, to do the upload. Because remember, uh, this is not publicly available. So we're gonna go here, right, and it's going to come back, okay, with a upload token. So this is step one, 
get upload token. Now the next step, what it's going to do is it's going to do, and let's just say this is, okay, upload chunks. So in my case, it was four, right? That's gonna be the next step. And then there is, oops, go back to black. There's one final that says, let's go back to blue, three permit chunks. So the biggest advantage of all of this is that these are not resources that you have to pay for because it's not on your infrastructure. This is going directly from the client machine, from the browser to Azure, right? So you want to have this um, available. You don't want it to consume your CPU, your memory, whatever to deal with it. The other thing that's nice is that because we're doing it in chunks, let's say that chunk two out of four failed. And remember, these are going in parallel, right? So one, three, and four are fine, but two didn't work. Well, I can just re-upload part two for a uh, four megabyte file is not a big deal, but for like, let's say a terabyte file, that's gonna be a really big deal. And so that's why it's really cool to have that. Maybe not a terabyte. I don't know if we can actually, can we hold terabyte? Let's just say gigabyte. I know we can do gigabytes. So there are limits even to the cloud. So what's really nice is that I'm talking to the API, which is a HTTP REST H, H So this is HTTP REST API. If we wanted to, so let's say you are in a brownfield uh, situation where you have a legacy application and okay, we're gonna put a modern front end and it can upload everything via REST API, but we have other pieces of the application that need to talk to the files and they're old. Well, the blob uh, storage is also a data store and let's just say another app, we're gonna call it a legacy app, if it needed to, it could mount it as network attached storage. It could, it shouldn't. I don't think that's great, but if you needed to, you could. So that's one way to kind of mix and match things and uh, leverage the power of the cloud. And you would save money that way. You can upload bigger files, better user experience because you can retry things. What else did we look at? We looked at security, right? You have the network layer, so OSI layer three, you have application layer security, so your identity-based security, which is layer seven. And then you saw on top of that, I have the time dimension. I'm creating tokens that are only short-lived. So I think that's all I'm gonna cover today because I have to go run and meet up with friends, go climbing. And at some point I'll try to cut this and publish this and see how it goes, 2024 raw videos, but you get something. Bye.